Hey everyone, for those that don't know, Genshin Impact version 1.2 will be arriving approximately around December 23rd. This is an official projected date by miHoYo. It could always come out earlier or later than the said date. But with 1.2, there will be some new characters to come. There will be the five style characters of Obedo and Ganyu. So I wanted to make this video to help you decide if you wanted to save for these characters or if you wanted to pull earlier or skip Zhongli and Child and Albedo and Ganyu and wait for the future characters like Xiao and Ayaka or Weiwei. Also keep in mind free to plays will only be getting about two to three multis per month and pay to plays will be paying about $20 per multi and it takes about seven to nine multis to be able to get any sort of five star. So plan and budget accordingly for what you want. Now let's get on with the video. Video. Alright, to start off with, let's talk about the characters to come with version 1.2. It'll be Albedo or Albedo and Ganyu. These are both 5 star characters and this one is the Master of Sucrose I believe in Alchemy. He is a sword user and geo element style and the other character here is the Cryo Bow user. For the 5 star Geo Sword character Albedo, his ascension materials will be the Cecilia plants you can find in Mondstadt, such as in the places like Star Snatch Cliff, and the Divining Scrolls that you get from the Hilly Troll Shamans. His skills will be that of his auto attacks are pretty similar to the other sword users with having no special effect, and his elemental skill or his E skill will generate a solar radiance zone where when enemies are hit in that radiance it'll create transient blossoms which deal AoE geo damage, and this damage is going to be scaled off of Albedo's defense, making him kind of a wonky character kind of like Noel. And these transient blossoms can only be generated once every 2 seconds, so there is an internal cooldown to that. And when there is a character in the focus of the Solar Radiance, it'll create a crystallized podium which also counts as a Geo Construct, which can work in conjunction with Zhongli. You can hold down the skill to direct where it lands, kind of like the Geo MC and other characters. You can see here that the duration is 30 seconds for the Radiance Zone and the cooldown is 8 seconds. These numbers are subject to change and these might just be pioneer values and his burst skill will be one where he snaps his fingers and he will shoot out a wave of geo. If there's a solar radiance in the vicinity, seven fatal blossoms will be generated to do AoE geo damage, but these will not generate uh, transient blossoms that occur from the elemental skill. You can see here it has a 12 second cooldown and the energy cost is only 40. For his talents, you can see that he is going to be using the Ballad Books as well as the same Divining Scrolls. And these items here are the items you'll be getting from the weekly boss child fight. When it comes down to his passives, his general passive is actually quite interesting where when Albedo crafts weapon ascension materials, he has a 10% chance to obtain double the product. This is going to be different than Mona's ability. Mona's general passive is one where when Mona crafts weapon ascension materials, she has a 25% chance to refund a portion of the crafting materials used. Since Albedo is the master of alchemy, it makes sense that his alchemy or his passive is a lot more potent to give 10% chance to get t double the final product. And his first ascension passive is going to be the damage that transient blossoms deal to enemies whose health is less than 50% is increased by 25%. And his ascension 4 talent is when Rite of Progeniture Tectonic Tide is cast, which is his burst skill, elemental mastery of characters in the party is raised by 125 for 10 seconds. I haven't seen or heard anything about his constellations and they're probably going to be changing either way once release happens so we're not going to talk about those. But overall I have heard reports where people have tried to use Albedo as a main DPS and they say he just doesn't quite have a whole lot of damage. But as a support character he's very flexible, he can be put on a lot of different teams seeing how he has a cooldown of 12 seconds and 40 energy cost and his elementary, elemental mastery buff lasts for 10 seconds and he can pretty much have his solar radiance on the field at all times with an 8 second cooldown and 30 second duration. For those that are curious is what Albedo's burst skill looks like where he enters a cinematic stance where he snaps his fingers and then it shoots out a wave of Geo. And for Ganyu, one of the waifus people have been waiting for, she will be a 5 star bow cryo user. Her ascension material will be the Qinxin flowers found in Liyue as well as the Whopper flower Nectar. When it comes to her skills and attacks, she's going to be a little bit different than some of the other bow users where her charge attack will actually fire a frost flake arrow that deals cryo damage. The frost flake arrow blooms after hitting its target dealing AoE cryo damage. This could mean that the Amos bow could be good on her where you charge up an arrow and shoot it from afar to deal that increased damage. It has been reported that the Frost Flake Arrow or the Charge Arrow on Ganyu actually does quite a bit of good damage with the modifiers, so they are trying to push Ganyu to be a Charge Arrow style character. 
For her elemental skill, it'll be something similar to where Amber throws her elemental bomb doll or when Mona puts down her little water fountain. However, the difference is that the Ice Lotus deals damage when it gets thrown out as well as it deals damage when it explodes. It will have a certain amount of HP that's going to be based off of Ganyu's max HP. It doesn't last for a very long time from what I've been told and it will give you elemental particles when you first throw it out if it hits a target as well as if it hits a target when it explodes as well. Also, when you throw out the elemental skill, you will dash backwards. I'm assuming this is going to be similar to that of Diona's dash backward or when Mona dashes backward. The duration is going to be 6 seconds and the cooldown is going to be 12 seconds. Her element skill also says that it shuns all impurities, which I'm assuming does a similar effect to that of Jean's burst skill or Bennett's burst skill, where it cleanses yourself of negative elemental ailments such as that that you receive on the abyssal floors and if you get hit by an element. Now the most interesting part about Ganyu is maybe going to be her burst skill of Celestial Shower. It's going to be one where she's going to summon an Ice Soul Gem into the sky and it's going to have a radius the size of about Bennett's ultimate or slightly bigger than Bennett's ultimate and it's going to continuously rain down Ice Shards and deal AoE Cryo damage. It's going to have a duration of 15 seconds, a cooldown of 20 seconds and an energy cost of 80 energy which is kind of high but it's going to last a long time and you'll probably be able to get your energy back especially with using a Sacrificial Weapon or a Favonius Weapon. Now I've been told that the ice shards are going to be similar to that of the floor effect here in this domain where they fall from the ceiling like this but they fall in about two shards per one second ratio so you get about 30 ice shards falling down during the entire burst duration which will mean that the cryo application will be quite heavy so that if you pair it with the pyro user you'll actually be able to perform melts quite often. Now the downside to Ganyu's ultimate is that it's a static area similar to that of like Lisa's burst skill, Bennett's burst skill, Diona's burst skill, or anybody else. So if you end up knocking them outside of the zone, they will not get hit by that cryo damage. For Ganyu's talent ascension material, it will be the Whopper Flower Nectar again, as well as the Book of Diligence. For her 7 plus material, it will be the boss material that you get from child called the Shadow of the Warrior. For her general passive, she will refund 15% of the ores used when crafting bow type weapons. This is kind of a useless talent just like Diluc does refunds with claymores. And for her first ascension talent, it is Undivided Heart. If the initial hit of the Frost Flake arrow is a crit hit, then the AOD damage that occurs afterwards will also be a, a crit hit. And for her Ascension 4 talent, characters within the radius of the Celestial Shower gain a 20% cryo damage bonus. Now for the whales, we're going to talk about her constellations. For her first constellation, taking damage from Frostbite Arrow, her charge attack or its AoE damage decreases enemies' cryo res by 15% for 6 seconds. A hit regenerates 2 energy for Ganyu. This effect can only occur once per arrow. This first constellation will help her be a better support for other cryo units such as Ayak or Chong or maybe just herself as a main DPS and it'll also regenerate energy so that she can get her burst skill a lot quicker. The second constellation will actually give her a second charge for her elemental skill allowing her to place two little lotus flowers for more damage and more elemental particles. The Cloud Strider third ability is one that increases her Celestial Shower, her burst skill by three levels, pretty standard. And her next constellation will make it so that the enemies standing inside of her burst skill will take increased damage for the longer that they are in it. Uh, it starts at 5% and it'll go up 5% for every three seconds. The burst skill lasts 15 seconds, so the total will be 25% percent in total and the effect will linger three seconds after they leave the aoe or even if the aoe expires the fifth talent will increase her elemental skill by three levels and then her last constellation is one of the most interesting ones where using her elemental skill will cause the next frost flake arrow or her charge arrow to re not require charging if you are fortunate enough to be able to pull or pay for seven copies of ganyu to get max constellation she does seem like she could be a very fun character to use as a main DPS or as a support, if you use her elemental skill, she will jump backwards and cleanse herself of debuffs or impurities. This should put her in far enough range for you to take advantage of Amos Bow, whether it's Refinement 1 or Max Refinement, and deal large damage as her Frost Flake Arrow or Charged Arrow will fire immediately, or be able to be fired immediately and have large multipliers. And when you land that Charged Arrow, it will decrease the Cryo Resistance on the targets and regenerate energy. She will be able to use two elemental skills to fire off two charged arrows rapidly. With her entire constellation kit, it seems like she'll be able to get her burst skill rapidly, whether it's for main DPS or support DPS. However, this 
fourth constellation seems like it's kind of a little bit defunct where 15 seconds is a long time and for people to stay in that tire field they kind of have to be immobile kind of like a Regispine or just a very slow and heavy target to not get knocked out. All in all it does feel like Ganyu is just another child where you're going to need it C6 for it to feel like a true character. However you could still always use that C0 just like people use child at C0 but it might be better off put as a burster just like child's best use as of right now is as a burst support kind of like Mona is. Also for those that are curious this is what Ganyu's burst skill looks like where she raises the orb into the sky and it expands. I do wish Ganyu was a four star but it is what it is and that's going to be all for this video. Please keep in mind that these are early 1.2 pioneer numbers and skills and passives and all that. They are subject to change just like how Child and Zhongli went through buffs and nerfs and just like a lot of other characters in this game. We will be posting videos if any significant changes do come across for these characters, but I do hope this little preview of these characters helps you decide if you guys want to pull for Child or Zhongli or save up. And also, uh, Xiao is expected to come out in 1.3 along with Weiwei, a 5-star Electro Claymore user. And in 1.4, it is possible that we finally get Inazuma and Ayaka. There were also no 4-star characters previewed in the early 1.2 testing so we might not get any new ones and it might just be these five stars that come along in the same fashion as child and jungli did where they were staggered one month apart i hope you guys did enjoy this video please do consider leaving a like comment down below if you guys will be pulling for all better or ganyu subscribe for more genshin related content join our discord to be part of our genshin impact community follow me on twitch for live tips and updates about what's to come such as for 1.2 follow me on my socials such as instagram and twitter for short and quick updates about the game i'll see you guys next time bye